everyone, I'm Catherine Messina Sapelin, your beer mistress, and today we are trying this beer. Huren Drak. Let's open this up. Ugh. Here's the bottle cap. So guys, my mom, hi mom, was saying how she enjoys it more when I try beers that I don't like. I don't think this is going to be one of those beers. Sorry. I failed at that. Aw. <laughs> That's sad. Now we're gonna have to wait for the head to go down. <laughs> While we wait, I can share some information about the beer with you guys. This came from a box set. That's right, you can get a box set of beer in Belgium. And it had six beers by the Van Steen Beur, all Dutch-like brewery. And this particular one is named after a statue that's on top of a belfry in Ghent. And for those of you who don't know what a belfry is, because I didn't, it's a bell tower, and this particular style of bell towers come from northern France and Belgium, and they are recognized as cultural heritages from the UNESCO. All right, so the head has gone down. Let's pour a little bit more. This is so hard to pour for inept people who cannot pour beer. Urgh. Oh yeah, anyway, the statue is that of a golden dragon, which that's what this translates to, in case you didn't get it from the golden dragon on this beer. Here's the color. It's a very dark honey amber color, and the head is off beige. All right, so this is one of those 33 ounce bottles. This comes in at 10.5% ABV. Probably gonna be a little tipsy by the end. So, according to the box that this came in, they said this was a barley wine. But when I looked up the beer, they said it was just a dark Belgian beer. So I guess that means it's both. So let's smell this. Mm, this does have a very fruity aroma coming off of it. it. Smells like sort of plums. I'm gonna say dark fruit. You can imagine what you will. I don't know what dark fruit is, but it's not light fruit, obviously. All right, let's try this and hopefully for my mom's sake, I won't like the beer, and then you all can be entertained, because I know all of you really like it when I don't like the beers. Hazontet. Sorry guys. This is actually sort of nice. Let's pour some more. Not too much head, not too much head. You can do it, Catherine. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Not, not really, because it's way than way more than two fingers. Yeah, this is more like three fingers than it is two. This is very delightful, by the way. Sorry, Mom. This has that nail polish remover taste, and what's surprising is it doesn't make the beer unenjoyable. It's it's there, but it's subtle. There's a bit of sweetness, but it doesn't taste like fruit. It's genuinely surprising because the aroma coming off of it like sort of reeks of plums. I don't know why it doesn't taste like plums. There's a lot of bitterness, but I like bitter. This has a really great aftertaste. There's a tiny bit of sweetness, not sweetness like sugar, but more sweetness in the sense of cinnamon or cocoa powder. So there's still a bit of bitterness in there as well. Ending is delightful. Right, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Hey, so. so I think a requirement for this beer is you're gonna have to be really proficient in pouring beer because like the head comes out so easily compared to like other beers, but I think that's a problem in general with dark beers, so be aware. Aside from that, I don't think I would recommend this as a first time beer. It's very delightful, it's very tasty, but that sort of sour nail polish remover taste, while it's not overwhelming, I think it could be very off-putting if you've never had beer before. If you like bitterness, you might be able to overlook that because it does end on this really great bitter note. It would just overall be a bad deal if this was your first beer and then it just turned you off to beer altogether because this is really nice. I can feel the alcohol going to my head now. I might be a little tipsy now. Considering the high alcohol content when I'm drinking it in 
Admittedly, I'm drinking it pretty fast. It's not hitting my stomach. And I enjoy that in my beers because drinking is very unenjoyable when you can feel the alcohol going over your tongue, running down and burning your throat and then pounding the crap out of your stomach. Like if I wanted that, I would have drank vodka or tequila. Cause let's be real, nobody drinks those because they're fun. Oh, you know what? I wonder if that nail polish remover taste is actually the taste of the alcohol. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments below. As a side note guys, I really like this bottle because it's white, but it's white because of plastic and not because of paint like my other white bottle. But it still makes me very happy. It makes me worry though because I'm thinking that this will eventually peel and then I'll just have to get a new bottle. But that's okay because this is, this is really good and I'd recommend it to you guys. Just not as a first beer. Do the normal progression. Start with Lambics and then work your way up. <coughs> okay. The, the foam by itself is not tasty. Ugh. I really like my bottle cap, guys. You know what I said about before with the alcohol going to my head? I'm really feeling it now, guys. Like, I need to go eat something because my head is spinning and I'm sitting down, so getting up is probably going to be a lot worse. I make new beer mistress beer reviews every Friday, so be sure to come back. But if you can't wait that long, be sure to check out my beer mistress beer review playlist. Share this video with your friends, families, and strangers on the internet because hey, it helps me. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment because I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Tote scenes, may apple scenes. Holy crap guys, that alcohol content is really like hitting me now because my head is spinning. Holy crap. I had a story, but for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. Cause yeah, I can't really think past anything other than I need to go eat something so that I can be less drunk.